Be good. Always feels like you're playing a bit of a gamble, like, no whammies, no whammies. But ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the DSL. This is Group B, and it's one of the first best of threes today. And unlike yesterday, I have my voice back, which is kind of nice. Spawning here towards the south, it's going to be the orange Zerg player, Tomikus. Who you guys have seen a little bit during uh, Legacy of the Void as well recently, if you've been watching our channel. In the top position, as the green Terran, it's Euthermal. You thermal, you thermal, you thermal. This guy, there's a million things to say about him. And it's like the worst because I feel anytime we say anything nice about him, he underperforms in the matches. Anytime we, time we don't bring that to the attention of anybody else, he actually does incredibly well. So I don't know what to do when it comes to talking about him because I feel like there's almost a cast or jinx on trying to build him up. Um, maybe, maybe. I'm going to say that I think he's going to win this one just because... Uh, not to be rude, but I just think Euthermal might be the better player here. See, he I, that success. I agree, but then we find ourselves falling back into the fact that it is TVZ. A matchup that Euthermal, well, beyond most other people, you know, well, everyone is hating TVP, Euthermal's like, no, 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 TVZ is what you need to hate. I, it is weird to hear that from any Terran player, but it's just that the last, okay, we've seen like, you know, what, like five games in total TVZs, maybe, maybe six, but like some of them are like really quite disappointing, so you kind of forget about them. But there's at least one we were like, oh, he doesn't feel confidence matchup, and then he like wrecked, so like he actually got to the mid and late game, and he looked at, and he looked like Maru, Thermal, or whatever, like with splits and was on whatnot, and it was really nice, and I can't remember who was it against. Damaga? No. Uh... God, it was, it was against some Zerg player, though, but not, like, a very up-and-up -up one, right? So, uh, he, I, I feel like that's why he did really well. Again, I'm trying not to be offensive here. <laughs> I'm just trying to say that one player is, like, super bad or super good, but Euthermal, I think, is just gonna... He's, he's gonna be okay in this one, okay? Let's that's, that's leave it at that. Yeah, I, uh, sorry. I don't want to take away from other folks in uh, today's group, by the way. <laughs> see some sarcasm coming out of the chat. The reason I personally said I think this one's going to be one of the best groups today is not because I think less of the other players, it's just we hold you Thermal to such high regard. If you've heard any of our casts before about him, especially when it comes to his control and splitting, like, we might as well be stroking him just a little bit. It's a, He's a player who has been in a lot of things we've cast. He won the Battle of the Ladder Heroes. He did absolutely miserably in that uh, Yord Invitational. He bounces around a lot, and that's why I said I was going to really enjoy this matchup, but I just want to clarify that. It has nothing to do with, like, taking away from the other players. It's just because we've seen so much out of you, Thermal. Well, we already have a little bit of an interesting TVZ for Vanai, especially. Uh, 14cc is probably, like, I mean, there's basically two things you can do, right? Like a Reaper Expander, 14cc. And then on Vanai, there's a third option, which is like a proxy Reaper, because it is such a good map for Reapers. Yeah. Seeing the 14cc wasn't abnormal, but since it is almost like a 50-50 split on which one you do, Tamika's going for a three hatch or for a pool was hella risky. And he gets away with it. I would agree. But again, this kind of goes back to you, Thermal, right? Like, his play style. Less on Reapers, less on Widow Mines, more Marines and Hellbats. That's true. That is true. I feel like um, I don't I don't imagine Tamikus actually does the same opening versus many other Terrans. Because the other thing about you, Thermal, too, is he won the DSCL last year, which means, you know, he's been in the spotlight. Everyone knows about his play style. It's not a secret. That. That's certainly true, uh, and they did have a lot of time to prep for this. Well, maybe Tamika's... No, wait. No, no. Who who replaced Harsom? Group C? Uh, Jonah? Jonah, yeah. Jonah, okay, never mind, then never mind. Uh, so, no, they, they both had a lot of time to know who their opponent was, and if they really did want to, you know, do well in this tournament, then studying up on them would be definitely a good move. I don't know, I, I'm under the opinion you should come to every tournament blind and unknowledgeable on what you're doing. All right, Matt, I just, uh, I don't want to bring this up, but I kind of do. Did you watch the late game yesterday? I watched, like, for whatever, 10 minutes after we hosted, and then I I went okay. and napped, like. I, like, I missed out on, like, an hour and a half on it, so I only got, like, the last 30 minutes. But they were talking, and they were, like, asking Combat X a bunch of questions, like, how did it feel to beat Parting, you know, once? And he was, like, saying how he just doesn't pay attention to who he's playing. He just plays towards the matchup, and he doesn't care. He'll, like, he'll know so much about the matchup because he's a math major or something. Sorry, I shouldn't laugh. <clears throat> but I was like, yeah, that's the, be that's the best way to play against it. Like, don't study your opponents. Just just play straight. 
So I don't, this is this is the old timey late to the scene ignorance coming in. I don't know a lot about combat X and his skill versus no skill, but I imagine however long ago it was that he was in the scene, I don't think that same guy can even hold a candle <laughs> to party nowadays though, right? He also, like I don't know if he like misspoke and meant something else, but the way that he phrased it was terrible, but he said that he heard that people are worse now than they were two years ago. And I was just like, no, that is like, absolutely no way that's correct. Right now, but. Oh god, that was a that well, was an interesting last thirty minutes of that it's, show. It's it's an interesting point though because some of the better players we've seen and you know God rest their souls because they don't freaking play anymore. But like Adele Scott and others, they're these real base badasses. They come oh, into a matchup, they didn't really care if it was Korean, foreigner, or not, and they would just go for these same builds every single time. So I mean, I can understand that much, but I'm just saying like it still helps to. It's very helpful to know your opponent does not use Widow Mines. Yes, it is, and that name was a throwback, man. Even I forgot about that one. Adele Scott, Adele yeah. Scott always, for some reason, I was running like caramel. I don't know why. Like butterscotch. Butterscotch, that's what it is. Okay, well, we got this push coming out of you, Thermon. I mean, this, you know, to, to give some credibility to this, this isn't something too dissimilar to what we saw Bunny using to defeat Snoot in what was like 20 of 20 something games and the best of 69. The attack does hit uh -huh. at a pretty opportune time, but the problem is. The hits with the queens, the lings are just in the nick of time, they're on top of the marines instead of the hellbats. You throw attack is not gonna work. They do here at this point do maximum damage. Work is kind of a it, it did work in a sense. I mean he still has three CC. The only thing that's really lacking is production. And that's just a simple lift off of his third CC if he really needs to. You know, there's not a mute is about to pop out, gonna wreck him while he doesn't have any marines. So it got a lot uh, of lings forced out. I mean Tix is only on forty nine drones. I kind of feel like, okay, you're right in that regard. Like, it did force more lings and less drones, force more aggression and less greed. But at the end of the day, like, those sort of really help out attacks, especially with a medevac dedicated to it. That's for drones. That's not for trading out with lings. It was also a 3cc Hellbat build, though, so that we usually do see the 2cc version, which definitely is a, a lot more committed. Uh, I think also some other people's reactions might be to just drone up and make up for the, the lings they had to produce, but I think Tamikus was planning on doing a 3-hatch Baneling bust anyways. If not, it's a really nice reaction because, well, there is no production, and I thought Mutas were the biggest problem to that, but it might just be an overwhelming amount of Marines that's going to be, or Banelings that's going to be a problem. Like, he at, he at least has to go up into his main base right now to hope to survive. Rip. Yeah. <laughs> I'm best casting all the time. Just <laughs> quiet little rip. There's, can... there's too much follow up to this. There just really is too much follow up to this. Even if he gets a new wall down, that's not just Ling's gonna be in, that's more Bane Ling's. Wall not gonna go down. There's oh, SCV transfer though. Oh god. Oh, at least if he split the SCVs, they would have soaked up maybe the rest of the Bane Ling's and he maybe had a fighting chance, but no, I think this I is gonna be it. I think he had a fighting chance. I think after that attack failed, like. I mean, this game's pretty much going as I thought it was gonna go. <laughs> it's a little unfortunate uh, too because you thermal I really like even though he doesn't have confidence in it and he said it himself I really like his macro play versus Zerg it's unfortunate we didn't get to see that in game number one but Tamika is, is gonna take a very resounding victory in uh, the first map I mean even even if he recovers yes he's on 3 CC yes he's <laughs> got upgrades but it's gonna be down to like a handful of workers yeah, all this like production and nothing to build with it um, yeah, but that was just a really nice response, a really nice build in general from Tamikas. Uh, it was... Mm, it was the perfect maneuver, in this case. And that that's just disappointing for you, Thermal's confidence, who I think went into this thinking, well, like, at least I think he's I, like, I know... He's losing the third. Yeah, he's, he's gonna, I mean, he's, he's dead. I, mean, I guess he's just, like, so letting it soak in. But his confidence is probably better than other TPCs. If he was facing Snoot, probably was pretty low. He's facing Tamikas, maybe medium, in this matchup. Now, it just reminds him of all the times that he's failed TDC before, and it's probably, like, a well, zero well, right like, now. Like, he's having, like, PTSD, like, in the background, like, oh, God, I not mean, again. Kind of, not again. Kind of. The bait wings. I can hear the screams like, all night. Oracle all ends you, right? Don't you get, like, flashbacks all the other times, like, the past 20 games of us with Protoss? You're just like, oh, this matchup is stupid. I guess it's, uh, what Thermal's doing right now.